Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Today is Friday, February 28th. What a week. Uh, just looking at the S&P, um, obviously uh, trading at around 28.85 right now. Down s and uh, down over 90 at this point. We've still got about eight minutes left in the cash market. But uh, a couple things I wanted to mention. One, we did a, a live stream right before the market as the market was opening this morning. So if you haven't had a chance to check that out, just go to navigationtrading.com slash live dash streaming. And that recording is still up. We've posted in the community as well. Go check that out. We talked about just the markets overall, kind of our our strategy for going forward. And we talked about the the VIX bunker trade and kind of the ramifications of, of what happened there. So I'm going to, it was about a 45 minute video. So I don't want to repeat a ton of that. So please go back and watch that for more insight on those topics. But I do want to touch on just a couple things. One, um, what's the what's the expected move for, for next week? So <clears throat> for a seven day expected move, we're looking at about a plus or minus 220 point move in the SPX. So, you know, that brings us, let's see, we're trading at 28.84. So, you know, that's going to, on the upside, bring us to about right there. On the downside, down to about right in this area. So, uh, big, big moves, obviously. And that that's what happens when this implied volatility expands. You get these wider, wider ranges, which allows you, when you sell premium, to obviously create a wider range as well. So, um, keep that in mind. I mean, you, you've, you know, in the, in a time like this, I, I want to reiterate, you've got to keep your position size small, make sure that you're not over allocating. You've got to be prudent in that. Like we talk about all the time. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out is if we just look at the, um, the year to date of SPX. So year to date, we are down 11 and a half percent. Now that's a that's a, obviously a sizable move down. We talked about this is the quickest 10% down move that we've ever seen in the market. So, you know, obviously this is not normal. No matter how much short delta you had, um, you know, it wasn't enough in a, in a situation like this. So, uh, keep that in mind. This is this is a very very significant move historically. Uh, so if, you know, if you're feeling the pain, trust me, everyone is, and, and it's just, it's, it's, it is what it is. I mean, you've got to, you've got to be prepared for this, but you can never be prepared for this, if that makes sense. And so, you know, but what I wanted to point out as far as the year to date is, okay, we're, we're down 11%, but when it comes to, you know, significant market corrections, a, a correction is technically considered a 10% off the top. Okay. We're, we're, we're significantly off that we're up four, we're down 11. So we're down 15% off of all time highs. So there's a couple of ways to look at that. Obviously it's happened fast. It's happened hard. And so a couple of ways to look at that is, okay, we're due for a bounce. Right. And, and so down 15%, do we get a, do we get a bounce into early next week or does this does this slide continue? Now, fifteen percent is a significant move. Don't get me wrong, but at the same time, I mean, we've seen the market drop from from highs 20, 30, 40 percent, and so you want to keep all of that in perspective as well when you're managing your positions. And so, obviously, nobody knows what's going to happen, but we're going to continue to manage our positions, stay methodical make the necessary adjustments that we need to and 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 battle through this. Now, we've we've seen big moves before. We've we've lived to trade another day and that is the key. You've got to keep your position size small enough. You know, if you're in a position where you're getting margin calls and you're, you know, having to take off positions and you're not able to battle back on those because you don't have the liquidity, because you don't have the capital, then then that obviously can hurt. And so you want to make sure that you are position sizing. Don't, don't try to, don't try to guess where the market's going to go. Uh, just continue to stay methodical and, and gradually build back to, to where you need to be. Uh, and we want to, you know, once this thing settles down, what you'll find is after a, after a market settles down after big sell-off, that is one of the best times to, 
th- those, what we found is those are some of the most profitable times. Okay. So I don't want you to get hit on the downside and miss out on the profits. You've got to keep your position size small so that you can withstand, so you can weather the storm and then still be able to profit when things do kind of calm down where we still have extreme, uh, extremely high implied volatility, but you're not getting these, you know, moves that, you know, 100, 150 point ranges uh, every single day in the market. You know, if we look, if we, if we go down into a smaller time frame, looking at a, uh, this is just a two day, five minute. So each one of these bars represents five minutes. I mean, look at the ranges on these, you know, in, in, in just these, in these time frames. I mean, this is one five minute bar and we're talking about from 2940 to uh, 2910. I mean, that's a 30 point move in the S and P in just a five minute period. So, you know, th- this, this will, f- uh, calm down. You know, I know, you know, when the market's grinding higher forever and we're just, we're wishing for that implied volatility, you know, it seems like that's never going to end. It seems like it's going to go up forever. And then on the flip side, like this, when it's going down, it's only been a week, a little over a week, but it feels like forever. Right. And so you've, you've just got to, you've got to play, you've got to continue to play the probabilities and you've got to continue to remember that nothing goes in one direction forever, uh, but you've got to stay small enough to allow those probabilities to play out and to benefit from that. Um, so let's go through the alerts. We had quite a few alerts, obviously, this week with everything going on with adjustments and taking off trades and adding new trades. So let's go ahead and jump right in to to recap these. So. First trade, closing trade in Amazon. We closed out our, uh, an iron duck. Price obviously moved lower, exceeded our exit profit, so we we bailed on that one. Same thing on Google. Uh, we had an iron duck there. Price moved lower, exceeding our exit point. We bailed on that one. Uh, closing adjusting trade in GC. So we closed out the put vertical side of an iron condor in gold. Uh, price had, had breached our upper break even. There's very little value left in that put vertical. So we closed that and then still holding our call vertical side. Now we're still holding that. So let's take a look at gold. And what's and, and interestingly, before I before I go to that actual trade, I mean, look at gold. Another thing I wanted to mention is it's down over three and a half percent today. Now, a lot of people think that gold is is kind of that flight to quality and it moves inversely to stocks. And we did see that uh, in, in this stretch here. But now, even with the S&P down 60 points, gold is down over three and a half percent. And so gold is actually a very uncorrelated asset. It's not, it's not significantly inverse correlated to stocks. And, and that's what we're seeing today where, uh, you know, the stocks are down as well as gold is down big. And so what did that do to our trade? Well, it brought us right back into range. And so we're, we're actually profitable on this iron condor overall. Remember, we closed out the uh, put vertical for next to nothing. Now prices come all the way back and we're going to be able to close this one out. I'm going to leave it over the weekend. Obviously, if we get a huge spike higher, I'm going to wish we had closed it. But, uh, you know, if we get a little bit more down movement, we'll go ahead and close this out and book a nice profit overall. The other thing that we did, kind of jumping ahead to the another gold alert that we did today, is we added another centered iron condor. We're talking about one contract at the selling at the 20 Delta, a $450 max profit on um, on just one contract here. So you can see prices moved down even since we put this on, hanging out right here. So we're just in waiting mode in gold. And again, I only did one one contract. You know, other times I may have done a couple, but you know, with, with everything that's going on, with the velocity of moves going on, we're just going to stay real small, just doing one contract here, but still getting a really nice credit of of 450 on that gold trade. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in Apple. So some of these short delta positions, you'll see a theme here. We're, we're rolling down these strikes. In this case, we were out in March. We rolled out to April and then rolled our strikes down closer to price. And when we roll these, whether it's a short call vertical or a long put vertical, what we're doing is we are, we're typically when we, when we roll these, we set it up so that our strikes are giving us about a 60% probability of profit. Now you can see, Price has moved down significantly. We're over 50% of max profit on this piece, and we're at a probability of over 74%. So, and, and typically what we talk about is, okay, once we get to about 50% of max profit, then we then we would roll again. But the way things are just moving in huge droves, 
we're, we're giving this a little bit more leeway. In other words, we don't we don't want to roll down and then we get this whipsaw action where that where the stock spikes back up. So we're just letting this sit over the weekend. You know, if we do if we do get a move back up, we will be looking to add some more short delta. Um, not necessarily in Apple, but in in different. We'll probably stick more to the uh, broad market indices that we already have positions on. DIA, ES. We may add to Apple. We'll see where we're at with everything. Uh, but just holding this over the weekend uh, to see where we where we shake out early next week. So that's our position in Apple. Next one, opening trade in SPX. So we opened up an Iron Duck, uh, this one with 14 days to expiration. And I'll go to SPX because we had we had several trades here. I'll go to the platform here in a second. Uh, next trade, opening adjusting trade in SPY. So we opened up an Iron Condor in SPY. And with that, with the down move that we've seen since we opened that, we are outside of range. And I talked about this a little bit in the, the morning video, but you know we're we're outside the range and we've we've got if we look at the just the call side we've got just a little bit of premium left in that so you know you certainly could have taken that off today uh, closed out that untested side but again we're just going to we're just going to hold this over the weekend obviously if it moves lower we'll take that off and look for a potential bounce uh but for now uh, we're just we're just leaving this on, and uh, if, obviously, if we get a bounce, we'll be back into range. Uh, or if we continue lower, we'll take off that untested side, and then hopefully look for a potential bounce uh, later or early next week. So we'll see what happens there. Next trade, closing trade in SPX. So we had an iron duck on with SPX with the down move. We hit our exit point. We closed out of that one. Uh, closing trade in Roku, same thing. We had an iron duck in Roku. This one actually did bounce after the fact. Let's take a look at a chart of Roku. Uh, it's acting a little bit different than the rest of the market. You know, not as not as much of a slide, but we we're still at our exit point, so we needed to exit. Um, what we will look at potentially if we do get uh, some bounce next week is there's stocks like Shopify and Roku. That are um, that still will set up for reverse iron ducks, and so I don't want to put one on down here and then it and then get ripped ripped off to the to the upside and have to exit that. But if we do get a bounce higher, you know we might potentially look for some reverse ducks, which which gives us that no risk to the downside um, on those trades too. So we'll be we'll be mixing it up and and continuing to add positions like that as well. Next trade, closing adjusting trade in GC. So we uh, closed out our short call vertical from our previous iron condor. <coughs> Excuse me. This one just had one day's to expiration. So we needed to exit. And then I already showed you what we're, what we're still holding in gold, that other short call vertical, as well as that uh, iron condor. Uh, next trade, rolling adjusting trade in SPY. So we had a short call vertical on from a previous iron condor. We rolled that from March out to April and we rolled those strikes down. Just like we talked about, we were well over 50% of max, more like 80% at that point. And so we went ahead and rolled that. Um, and then on a later alert, I'll show you, we, we actually ended up just closing that out because we, as the market continued lower, we got a significant drop, booked more profit on that piece. And so we went ahead and just got out of that to, to lighten up our, our deltas a little bit. And I'll, I'll talk about that here in a minute. Uh, next trade, rolling adjusting trade in DIA. So uh, with this one, we were already in the cycle with 52 days to expiration. So we didn't want to roll out to a further dated longer than 52 days. And so what we did is we just rolled our strikes down and stayed in that 52 day cycle. I got a question about this um, in the in the community because you know typically when we're rolling, like in this case in SPY, we rolled from March to April. And uh, when you do that, toss displays it as a vertical roll because that's what we're doing. In the, in the case when you're staying in the same cycle, toss is going to display it as a condor, not iron condor, but just condor, because because of the way the the legs are, are bought and sold. That's that's what that's what is considered. So that's what toss displays it. Um, and so just want to make sure you understood that. And so we rolled that down from the 297 302 down to 281 286. And so let's just go ahead and take a look at DIA. And if we take a look here, so here's the remaining short call vertical that we have on here. Again, we're over 50% of max on this one, but again, just kind of giving it a little bit more time, see what happens early next week. And, and then we will either, again, we're in April, 
at this point on Friday now, we've got 49 days to expiration. So we're not going to roll out to May with 77. We'll stay in April and we'll just simply roll these strikes closer, collect that credit and continue to keep that short delta. Uh, and again, if we get a spike higher in stocks, then we will look to potentially add our other you know, short call vertical back in here. Uh, we'll also be looking to sell some additional premium, whether that's iron condors or strangles. But again, we're going to stay super small and, uh, and, and keep those, keep those positions small and manageable. And look at this. I mean, we've, we've got two minutes left in the bell and we were, you know, we were down, what was it? 60 some when we started and now we're down only 36. So it's, I mean, these are just massive moves we're seeing here. Uh, next trade, uh, opening adjusting trade. So we added a short strangle in bonds. Bonds have obviously been in fire on fire to the upside. We added this with 59 days to expiration, still holding our other adjusted strangle with 31 days. And so let's take a look at that. So we've got these two pieces on in bonds. So here's the one we just added. Price is still within range, but we're, we're down because implied volatility has just expanded significantly uh, in, in, in bonds. The other piece that we have, it's, it's well out of range here. Uh, that's the 161 straddle. You can see we're way out here. Uh, if we take a look at the untested side, we've got very little value left in those puts. And so just, again, wanted to give it over the weekend. Obviously, if we get a, a, a bounce lower, that's going to be helpful for that position. But either way, most likely we'll be rolling our puts down and go inverted in that, uh, in that bond um, straddle. So that one's got 28. So, you know, this is kind of a little bit of a gray area as far as what we like to do. But, um, you know, with, on Monday, we'll be down to about 25 days to expiration. So to me, that's, that's close enough getting down to that 21 day area that will probably, when we roll those puts up, we will also roll that out into May. So both of our positions will then be in May, which at this time have that 56 days until expiration. Next trade, opening adjusting trade in ES. So this is where we, uh, earlier we added a long put vertical in ES. So we we're adding to our short delta. And we did that on 225. So let's just go to the chart for some reference here. So on 225, which was this day here. So in the, what we, what happened is we, that was our, that was, mo so Monday we had the big down day. On Tuesday, there's the closing bell. On Tuesday, uh, in the morning, we got a little bit of a bounce higher, okay? And and I mentioned in the community, if we open higher, if we bounce higher, I'd be looking to add some short delta. So up in this area here, which was just happened to be great timing, uh, we added another long put vertical uh, for that, and we got we got the benefit of that flush down on that piece. And so that was that one that we added there. Uh, next trade, rolling adjusting trade in XLK, another short delta position. Rolled this from March out to April, adjusted our strikes down. So if we take a look at XLK, we're now in a position where we could potentially roll this one again, although uh, XLK, along with the NASDAQ, is actually green on the day. Uh, let's look at the futures. Um, yeah, NASDAQ is actually green. NASDAQ is actually up and s and P's up. Look at that move. We were down 36. Now we're up seven. <laughs> Woo. Crazy moves. Um, so XLK, uh, so you can see we're, we're sitting right here. And, and again, if we continue to get a bounce higher, we might, this may be one that we potentially add to. If we continue lower, we'll roll these strikes down and stay in April. Next trade, opening trade in rut. So we up, opened up a new iron duck in rut. This one moved down far enough today that we ended up closing that one out. It hit our exit point, so we went ahead and bailed on that. Uh, I, I talked about this in the morning video too. We, we will continue to add uh, iron ducks um, in SPX and rut in these big indices. Uh, I was looking to potentially do uh, another one today, but decided to hold off and wait until early next week on that. Um, so we will. So we don't have any trades on in rut at this point. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in DIA. So this is that uh, another short call vertical that we rolled from March out to April. So I already showed that. Uh, closing trade in SPX. So we bailed on another one of our SPX ducks that hit our exit point. Um, rolling adjusting trade in QQQ. Again, this is as, as it displays here, a condor because we stayed in that same cycle with 51 days, just rolled down our strikes. And let's take a look at the Qs. I don't think I've touched on them yet. 
Uh, so we've just got this one in April, and again, kind of sitting right here. Same story. We get a bounce. We'll, we might add to this. If it continues lower, we'll roll down, roll down those strikes and stay in April. Opening trade in forward slash 6E. So we were looking for another kind of diversified underlying to add some premium to. 6E fit that bill. Fit that bill. So if we look at, at 6E, you can see prices moved up higher in 6E since we put this on. Implied volatility has expanded. And so we, we will, we're going to be very careful about adding to these positions. Now, this is a pretty small, as far as futures go, I mean, we've got a max profit of 462. And so, you know, this one may be one that we potentially add to if it, if it bolts out of our range. Um, but more than likely, we'll just roll up the untested side and continue to manage these trades to, to keep our position size small. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in IWM, another short delta position. So we just rolled this one, stayed in that same cycle with 51 days, just rolled our strikes down. So if we take a look at IWM, a lot of these uh, look very similar. Price is hanging out right here. So we got some profit on that piece and we will potentially either add to or roll this position next week, depending on which way things go. Next trade, closing adjusting trade in ES. So we had two two of those long put verticals in ES. We were over 80% of max profit on that piece. So we went ahead and just closed that out to lighten up our, as I mentioned, we, we lightened up our short delta a little bit and we'll reload if we get a bounce higher. Uh, closing trade in SPX. So this was another uh, iron duck in XP, SPX that we bailed on. Uh, opening trade. So we opened up another iron duck in SPX and we've still got this one on. And if we take a look here, so price is hanging out right here, just inside the duck head. So we're in good shape at this point. Of course, things can change very quickly, obviously. Um, let me get back to that. Yeah, so price is hanging out right here, right inside that duck head. So we got all the way down to 28.03, which is down here. So we would hit new lows if we get to that break even uh, on SPX. Next trade, closing adjusting trade in SPY. I already mentioned this. So we had that short call vertical. We went ahead and closed that out, and we're still holding that full iron condor. Opening adjusting trade in SMH. So again, just kind of jumping in, adding a little bit more short premium. Uh, I already showed you that one. We've got that short strangle in SMH. We've got those. Actually, I don't think I did touch on that one. So SMH, we've got two pieces on here. We've got our adjusted short strangle. And you can see prices hanging out right here. And then our other strangle that we have not adjusted is this one here. We can see prices dead centered, but we are down a little bit just because all about implied volatility expansion. And when things, uh, when when options expand like that, even if you're dead centered, you can you can still be down a little bit on the trade. So we're just going to continue to wait now. If, if we get an implied volatility contraction next week, you're going to see premium sucked out of these like. Like probably like you haven't seen before, um, you know, implied volatility is going to st still be high relative overall. But on some of these positions, if you add uh, add some short premium uh, and and your timing and your kind of direction happens to to work out, I mean, you're going to see these the the premium get sucked out of these options real real quick. Or if they come up with a cure for the coronavirus, or you know, something something crazy happens where they uh, where it kind of lessens the overall uncertainty in the markets, um, then you're going to see, uh, you're going to see some premium get, get sucked out of these things. Closing adjusting trade in DIA already mentioned that. So we closed one set of those still have the remaining one. Just again, like I said, lightening up on our short Delta there, uh, rolling adjusting trade in ES. So this is that ES long put vertical that we, we went ahead and rolled this from 35 days out to 49 and then uh, rolled those strikes down to uh, to accommodate price moving lower. Rolling adjusting trade in SMH, so that was the adjusted strangle I just showed you. So we were down to 21 days. So and it was and we had very little value left in the um, left in the call side. So we went ahead and rolled that uh, not only our calls down, but we rolled that from 21 days out to 49. And then we opened up a short call vertical in VXX. So this is what we talk about in the in the VIX course of when you get these spikes, putting on some short call verticals in VXX. So that's what we did here. Now this did add a little bit of long delta, uh, but you can see it's it's come in nicely from where we put it on. Um, 
and so just looking at the chart of VXX, you know, we put it on when, when price was up here and it, it did contract here with the market going higher. I mean, look at this S and P's up 25 to end the day. Um, and so that's, that's, we got the benefit of that here with this little bit of a down move in VXX. So overall, uh, speaking of short Delta, just want to give you a kind of an idea of where we're at overall, you know, we, we lightened up, uh, some of our short Delta and um, and so now where we sit is we actually have a little bit of long delta overall in our portfolio. Not too much, uh, but we do have a little bit of long delta. So a bounce would definitely be helpful in this case. And then if we could, you know, in a perfect world, let's go to the ES. In a perfect world, you know, we get a we get more of a bounce in the next week. We reload, add some more short delta, and then, you know, then we would get that continuation to the downside. Now, nothing ever works out perfect, and we're not trying to catch bottoms and tops or anything like that. But um, you know, when we when we uh, lightened up our short, some of those short delta trades, I think, you know, the market was about right here. And obviously, we wish we'd have held it longer, but then it, it has reversed. And so, you know, we'll look to potentially add some more short delta as we uh, as we move along here. Next trade, closing trade in RUT. So that's that iron duck I mentioned. Uh, rolling adjusting trade in CL. So we've got our short strangle in CL still with 48 days to expiration. So we did not roll out in time. We just rolled down our calls. So we had the um, we had the 58 and a half calls and we rolled those down to 47 and a half. Uh, our puts are at 47 and a half as well. So now we've got a short straddle in CL. Uh, so if you take a look at the way that that looks, uh, obviously it looks a little goofy because it doesn't take into consideration the credit that we got on those calls. Uh, but we are inside the range here and I'm just waiting for some more time to pass. And then we'll eventually, when we get down to about 21 days expiration in this May cycle, then we will roll that out to the next cycle, which will have 40 to 50 some days in it. Um, and so that's where we're at in oil. Lastly, opening adjusting trade in GC. So that's where I, I showed you we added that iron condor in gold out here uh, with 50-some 50, 50 days to expiration. So still just kind of hanging out pretty centered there. So those are all of the alerts. Let's see if I missed any positions here that we didn't touch. Uh, wheat, we've got this iron condor. Grains have not really moved that much. So price is still hanging out right here inside of our range. Uh, Apple, I mentioned that one. We've got that short call, uh, excuse me, long put vertical. Uh, DE, we've got a, uh, a short call vertical here. Uh, you remember after earnings, this one spiked up out of our range. It's come all the way back down into range here. So just continue to manage that. I mentioned DIA, IWM, Qs, SMH, SPX, uh, SPY, VIX. I'll come back to that. Uh, VXX. Um, uh, XBI. So this is one that this one is in March has 21 days and it's out of range. Uh, I've given it a little bit more time just to, you know, in case we do get a little of a bounce, we did, you know, it closed up 1.84% today. But if we look at the, the value in those calls, you know, we still have full value in those calls. So I wasn't, I wasn't excited to, to adjust that one already. However, we are down to 21 days to expiration, so certainly could have done that today. Uh, we're just going to give it over the weekend, see if we can get a little bit more back towards the center, and then we will roll this entire spread out to April, which at that point will have about 46 days on Monday. Uh, and then I mentioned XLK. So VIX, uh, again, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse on this one. We, we talked about this uh, a lot in this mor in the mornings. Um, uh, update. But if you look at this, I mean, you know, well, first thing I, I, I do want to just touch on it briefly, just because it, it is such a frustrating thing. You know, if you look at, okay, the VIX is the VIX spot index is trading at call it 40, 39.9, right? Oops. 39.9. But look at the, look at the VIX futures because the VIX options are tied to the VIX futures. Even the short term ones with five days left are trading at, at less than that. They're only trading at 35. And then if you go out to June, which is what we have, they're only trading at 20, you know? So uh, basically market saying, you know, okay, well, there's fear, there's uncertainty in the short term, but out in June, we got got basically no fear. And so obviously with our June options, they did not expand the way that we, way that we wanted them to. If we go back to the, um, 
go back to VIX on the trade tab and I talked about this this morning. I mean, we, you know, these five that we sold, we sold for 281 and they're trading at 550. But the ones we bought at a buck 15 are only trading for 225. And so that's why we're, we're seeing not only, not even a profit on these things, but we're actually down on them a little bit. I am going to hold on to this uh, primarily because I want to see what, when we get an implied volatility contraction, if we do, you know, if, if we get down to 60 days to expiration, we're just going to bail on this. But uh, I do want to hold this for a little bit longer just to, just to watch it in kind of real time and update you all. Uh, we're, we're not doing any more of these. That's, I mean, that's pretty obvious. We've talked about that as well. Uh, these, you know, using the VIX from this protection standpoint is, is, is not, does not work in a situation like this. I mentioned it has worked in the past. We had these on for that February, 2018 situation. It did work, but this go around for whatever reason, the, the way that they're pricing, especially these longer term VIX options, um, it's not, it's not doing what we want it to do. So we will be we will be coming out with uh, a, a different kind of alternative to that bunker, and we've already been putting some of these on, even with the market already down as much as it is, and it's it's working like it should, and it's essentially the, a similar trade using a back ratio on the put side in SPY or an index like that, and it is working. So we'll have more details about that coming out, and um, and and so stay tuned for that, but. This this current bunker strategy using the VIX is dead. We're not we're not uh, we're not going to be using this anymore. So, having said all of that, um, I want to see if there's anything else I want to mention. Bonds. So, uh, I talked about our bond position, but um, bonds obviously have an inverse relation to interest rates, and and as a kind of a flight to quality with stocks. If people are nervous about stocks, they pile into Oops, they pile into bonds, and, and we're seeing that escalation here. If we look at, um, you know, one thing you can look at, it's not a direct inverse correlation, but it's, it's uh, you know, ZB is closer to the 30, it's called the 30-year. Um, but the uh, if you look at TNX, for example, that's the ticker that shows the 10-year treasury. And so, like I said, uh, interest rates have an inverse correlation. So, I mean, look at what interest rates have done. And just today, just a huge drop in interest rates. And so you're going to be hearing a lot about that in the media as far as what that means. And if you look at this, it says 11.27 is the price. But you think of that as really as 1.127 is the interest rate on the 10 year. And so we're going to be looking at some uh, yield curve inversions, if you've heard that term, but don't quite understand what that means. Essentially, the most common one that, that's looked at is the uh, the difference between the two and the 10. Um, you know, so basically, you know, the two year, if the two year is paying higher than 1.127, uh, then, then that's considered an inverted yield curve. Because typically, if you're taking the duration of a 10 year note, um, you should be getting more yield than you would on a two year. But in this case, the two year is paying a higher yield than the 10 year. And, and I haven't looked at the two year. I'm, I'm not sure if that's the case yet. But, um, you know, most likely we will be seeing this. And then we could potentially see the Fed come out and try to lower interest rates because what they essentially really the only thing that they control is those really uh, short term one month, uh, two month, three month type interest rate durations. And so if they come out and start lowering those, um, you know, then, then you get that yield, uh, uh, yielding inversion. And, and that has been a predecessor to a lot of recessions. Now the media is going to jump all over that. And anytime there's a uh, yield curve inversion, um, you know, they're, they're going to start spouting that, that the recession is coming. Keep in mind all these, you know, some of these terms that especially the media uses, um, you know, recession, correction, you know, what does that all mean? Well, essentially a correction is kind of considered a 10% decline, right? We are in a correction. We have seen the correction. A recession is considered a 20% drop. And so, you know, you, you want to, you want to look at those from really what they are. Those are things in hindsight, right? We're, after we've been down 10%, that's when we've made a correction. After we've been down 20%, that means we have that means we have been in the recession. So keep that in mind when you're when you're reading headlines and you're hearing the media talk about, oh, we're in a recession, though. You know, things are still pretty good. Now, 
that doesn't mean they're going to continue, right? I mean, this if these a lot of these companies continue to be shut down from the coronavirus and and profits and revenues and that kind of spirals into other industries and other places, you know, that certainly could, but but the economy overall is, is still very strong. Unemployment is very low. You know, with interest rates being low, there's a lot of cheap money for businesses to borrow and expand and do different things. So don't get too caught up in the headlines that you read. Um, when you're trading the way that we do, you still have to be more focused on probabilities and strategy over news and headlines. Okay. So keep that in mind. Everybody have an excellent weekend and make sure your position size are small enough so you can sleep this weekend. Don't be in a position where you're nervous and waiting, you know, and, and just waiting for the market to open because you are nervous about what's going on. But have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next week.